All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be taking a look at the cards from Dimension Force that are going to fill up those last 10 or so filler slots. Usually they fall right in the category of being kind of interesting to look at, but mostly irrelevant in terms of any gameplay impact. But this time around, there is one card I think is really goofy that warrants a little bit of discussion, even though it's inherently terrible. Sekatori Musamaru is a brand new Xyz monster that has an alternate win condition and some verbiage that I don't think I've ever seen on a Yu-Gi-Oh card. So we're going to take a look at that card a little bit later in the video, but let's jump into it, taking a look at all of the filler slot cards for Dimension Force. Starting off with Materiactor Anulis. This is a normal spell, and it says as follows. Detach one Xyz material from a card you control, then if it was sent to the graveyard, you can set it to your field. So I admit, I'm not super familiar with Materiactors. I did a bit of research before making this video, and it turns out there's only two other Materiactor cards that exist. One is a level 3 monster from Blazing Vortex, and the other is a rank 3 monster, and none of them have any synergy with this card. So I'm not sure what exactly they are looking for in terms of the support with this. It feels super generic, obviously. Um, really, maybe using it to trigger the effects of something that activates when it's sent to grave, or if you have an Xyz monster that triggers when something is detached. But this is quite literally the epitome of pack filler. I don't think it does anything. It certainly doesn't do anything for mature reactors. But... It's here, and I figured we'd cover it, so unless there's something I'm missing or they plan on releasing more Mature Reactors that are going to do something. I mean, I know there is uh, Mature Reactor Gigadra, and it is a neat card just based on what it does, and it seems like it could have some potential, possibly, but I don't think that that's really going to do anything unless they give us more Mature Reactor cards, and like I said right now, there's only two before this card's release. Midday Sentinel looks like a bit of a throwback to Silver Sentinel, if you guys remember from, I think, Photon Shockwave. Was that when that came out? It was quite a while ago. I'm not exactly sure on the set. It might have been Tacky on Galaxy, actually. Uh, this is a level 6 Earth Monster. You can set this card from your hand to your spell and trap zone as a spell. Once per turn, during the standby phase of the next turn, after this set card was destroyed and sent to the graveyard, you can special summon this card, then destroy all cards in all your opponent's cards in this card's column. It's not. It's cute. For those of you that don't remember, Silver Sentinel came out way back in the day, and it basically had a very similar effect in the sense that you set it, and if it's popped, during the end phase of that turn, you target a card your opponent controls and destroy it, and then special summon Silver Sentinel from your graveyard. So it was looked at by some as a tech with some potential because you could snipe out a specific card. This just seems to pop cards in the column. I guess you can choose what column you're summoning it in, so there is that. You do have the ability to sort of pick what you want to hit. But let's call a spade a spade. This, much like Silver Sentinel, is going to be pack filler. It just won't have the benefit of a really nice ultimate rare like Silver Sentinel did back in the day. Mare of the Shore. I do like the artwork on this. A level 4 water aqua monster. If this card is normal or special summon, you can send one aqua monster from your deck to the graveyard, except Mare of the Shore. During your end phase, you contribute this card, then target one aqua monster in your graveyard, except this card, add it to your hand. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. So I'm going to be honest with you. This one is actually pretty good and i don't know what its immediate application would be but i do think it has the potential to be more than filler i think of cards like ronin totin and the other frog package as things that it can send to the graveyard to be able to trigger their effects but the thing is swap frog typically does that itself for the most part which can be a bit of a you know a redundant point especially because this is level four so it wouldn't really synergize with any of the other frogs like swap frog does but I'm sure there's some Aquas I'm not thinking, or perhaps future Aqua support that would make this potentially usable, especially because it does trigger off of a normal or special summon. The end phase effect is super slow, so I don't think it's going to be anything that anybody goes for, but it's a cute card that does have potential to at least be more than filler down the line, depending on what other Aqua cards are released, and whether or not it has any really strong synergy. Next up, we've got Entombing Casket Sarcophagus. When I first saw this, I got a little excited that it was going to be support for Spirit of the Pharaoh, which I still think needs a retrain without a doubt. Uh, when this card is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster, you can take control of that opponent's monster, and if you do, it becomes a zombie monster. Also, its attack and defense becomes zero. When your zombie monster is destroyed by battle with an opponent's monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can banish this card, take control of that opponent's monster, and if you do, it becomes a zombie monster. Also, its attack and defense becomes zero. You can only use this effect of this card once per turn. This is actually a really cool card, conceptually, and I think back in like 2000. 
2009, 2008, before Battle Destruction became completely irrelevant, it would have been a really, really good card to uh, toy around with in certain decks, especially as something you could grab off of Mystic Tomato, back in decks that played Pyramid Turtle, Zombie Master, Mizuki, so on and so forth. As it stands now, it's very clearly filler, especially because of the reliance on Battle Destruction. That secondary effect might have some potential if it triggered off of card effect destruction, but you're really getting into some tricky territory there in terms of balance and whether or not it's even applicable still. Zombies have gotten a lot of love lately. This is definitely not their strongest piece of support, but at the very least, it's got some cool artwork and was able to briefly create some false hype for me that we'd be seeing Spirit of the Pharaoh and or real sarcophagus. Surprise Chain is a quick play spell that says activate as chain link two or higher. Apply these effects in sequence based on the chain link number of this card. You cannot activate this card if multiple cards with the same name or their effects are already activated in that chain. Two or more, so if it's chain link two or higher, excavate cards from the top of your deck equal to this card's chain link number and place them on top of your deck in any order. Three or more, do the excavate and then send the top card of your deck to the graveyard. So I guess you can set up a mill. Uh, and three, uh, four or more, draw one card. So at best, as a chain link four, you can excavate cards from the top of the deck. You mill one, you draw one. It's a much worse pot of duality that looks on paper like, it's just trying way too hard to be cute and be interacting with the chain links. Having to get something up to a chain link 4 is not the easiest thing to do. I know in the modern game it's a lot easier, but it's still relatively challenging, especially if you're forcing it for the sake of resolving a card. When things like Pot of Prosperity, Pot of Duality accomplish what this is ultimately going to do anyway. Not to mention this has a hard once per turn. There's just way too many things going on for this card that make it nothing more than pack filler, but it's just a cool card to look at, I suppose, and a reminder of some of those chain link cards from Cyberdark Impact that, you know, things like Miraculous Rebirth and even Vanity's Call were both cards that came out in that set that had some really powerful effects for being chain link reliant. Dream Pillow Parasomnia is an equip uh, equipped level. Dream Pillow Parasomnia is an equip spell uh, that says during the end phase you can destroy the equipped monster. If this card is sent to the graveyard because the equipped monster is destroyed and sent to the grave, you can special summon one Parasomnia token with the same original type, attribute, and attack as the monster that this card was equipped to. Then equip this card to that token. You can only use each of these effects once per turn. So it's pretty neat in terms of its concept. It's just tremendously slow. Having to rely on it during the end phase, you can equip it to an opponent's monster, destroy it during the end phase, and then you get a token. I mean, I could be missing something with this because it's an equip, so maybe there's some weird stuff you can do. Maybe there's destruction effects you can trigger. I'm not sure. It seems to me like it's pretty bad. I don't see any immediate application. There's not too much to say. But maybe somebody will notice something I didn't. Certainly, if you guys are seeing things I'm missing, let me know in the comments down below what application you think this card. Fun Shop Ledger Book. Target up to two monsters your opponent controls. Banish them until the end phase. Then your opponent gains a thousand life points for each monster that left the field by this effect. Okay, so this is actually kind of neat. I don't necessarily think it's going to see any type of immediate play. The life point gain that your opponent gets is obviously problematic. But what I do like about it is the fact that it can remove things that are problematic for you. And in that case, the life point gain is kind of a moot point. So one of the things that comes to mind is things like El Shadal Window. You can banish it to get it off the field long enough to be able to special summon and go off. But your opponent does get the cards back. So it's sort of like you have to win in that turn. You can banish stuff to swing for game, maybe, if you can, you know, outweigh that 1,000 life point boost. This one actually feels like trap decks could potentially benefit from it, but it also feels like I'm maybe thinking with a bit of a theory application approach versus, like, practicality. I don't know. It does feel like a neat way to, like, out things that are problematic, and it's up to two, so it's not forcing you to banish two. But like I said, the cards do come back, so that's basically meaning you're only getting rid of them temporarily, and it does target, so a lot of things would be able to respond to it. I don't know. This one's on paper, anyway, seems like it has some cute applications, but again, I'm just sort of giving my initial reaction to it. I'm sure if I sat down and tried to actually play it, the results would be very different. Vivid Tail, target one card you control, return it to the hand. If this set card is in your graveyard, you can target one face-up card you control, set this card, and if you do, return that card to the hand, but for the rest of the turn, you cannot activate cards or the effects of cards with the same name as that card returned to the hand. You can only use one Vivid Tail effect per turn, and only once that turn. This one is actually okay, I suppose, like being able to bounce and reuse certain things like Tanky or other cards that activate when activated so that you can reuse their effects. 
uh, being able to bounce something like maybe like Imperial Order, if it's like you activated it and now it's negatively impacting you, you can bounce it to get it off the field. I mean, that's just a few things that come to mind. And obviously you can do this effect a few times. I don't know. It's, it's actually potentially useful with certain things uh like treasure map for example there's an old card treasure map of course when it's returned to the hand you can activate it draw two cards and then discard one i'm half joking there but that is the type of application that you'd be looking at with a card like this i do think that for the most part whatever it's going to accomplish is going to end up being easier to do without using this card but there are definitely some cute meme applications. And finally, the card we teased at the beginning, this Sekatori Musumaru, is literally one of the goofiest cards I've ever read, with no exaggeration. It is a link, a rank 6 Xyz monster. It needs two level 6 monsters, and this effect is a mouthful. At the start of your opponent's battle phase, roll a 6-sided die. Treat the next 6 main monster zones on either field as numbers 1 to 6 counting clockwise from this card in the main monster zone, and move this card to the zone that corresponds to the result of the dice. If a monster is already in that zone, attach it to this card as material. When the number of cards attached to this card this way becomes higher than 6, you win the duel. If this card cannot be moved, or if the monster that is already in that zone cannot be attached to this card as material, send this card to the graveyard. This card is so goofy, but I just, seeing the verbiage here and the idea that you're going to roll the dice, you're going to move it to take something, and then you can keep doing that, you're sort of, I mean, the opponent's going to get rid of it, right? Or there's just ways to, to move it. I mean, you don't, you just generally, it's so easy, it's so easy to get over it, um, being able to move it to the monster zones, and then even, like, you, I believe the way this is worded is you can move it to your opponent's monster zones as well. Although I don't know what would happen there in terms of the roll. I don't really know the full breakdown of this card. That's what type of like brain-breaking text this card has. What I can tell you is that it is quite bad. But I do think in a few weeks we'll see somebody post some kind of FTK video on like DevPro where they're taking this deck against some you know table 500 deck and trying to win with this win condition. Uh, there's going to be rulings nightmares that come as a result of this and and again it says numbers one through six which leads me to believe that it needs to like it needs to move to an opponent's zone and back and forth and at that point it's like well does your opponent get to do those roles it's not optional but they could just link it away i just don't think this card is very good but i did think it was goofy enough to sort of sit there and say we should at least look at it because it is a win condition it's just quite possibly one of the worst but most bizarre uh, win condition cards that i have seen in some time and I do not think it's going to be uh, game-breaking in any way. But brain-breaking, definitely. Uh, it's definitely got that going for it. So that's the wrap for the filler cards from Dimension Force. Let me know what you guys think of these cards, including Sekatori Musumaru and maybe a few of the other ones that seem to have a little bit more potential. Sound off in the comments down below. If you did enjoy the video, please hit the like button and subscribe. You can click the bell icon if you want to stay notified when new videos drop. Usually Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but this was, you know, there's still new cards to reveal and cover. So the schedule can fluctuate a bit, but typically two to three videos a week is what you can expect. Leave a comment down below and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Peace.